Hey, welcome back to the Ping Pong Flick Show. My name is Chris Wong. This is episode 423 of the Ping Pong Flick Show. Let's start with a, a pretty surprising headline from Deadline. Uh, this is the title. Joker set to bank near half a billion in profits on par with Avengers Infinity War. My God. This has become a, such a monstrous movie from such a low, low uh, budget. It, it, it's incredible. So this is the article. No huge shocker here, but Warner Brothers, Village Roadshow, Bronze Studios, Joker is going to churn a profit on its way to becoming the highest grossing R-rated movie of all time. How much profit, you ask? Our sources say the Joaquin Phoenix pick is poised to make at least $464 million after global, theatrical, TV, and home entertainment windows. And it could be more if the worldwide box office for the Todd Phillips directed movie exceeds $900 million. That amount of profit isn't that far from what Avengers Infinity War racked up last year in Black Ink. That pick made a half a billion dollars, but was more expensive with a production cost in global P&A of a half billion dollars. Joker's profit is also not that far from Black Panther's $476.8 million and way ahead of Aquaman's $260.5 million, which at combined budget and P&A of $348 million with 83% more expensive than Joker. Venom's nears $247 million and Deadpool's 2 is $235.4 million. Now, Joker is expected to be at $825 million in world, world worldwide box office at the end of its fourth weekend. While in its fourth weekend here in North America, the pick is expected to lead a sleepy Halloween frame with 19 to $20 million for number one. Off 33% from a week ago for a running domestic total nearing $279 million. It faces three wide openers this weekend. Uh, the Current War, Black and Blue, Countdown. But, but, this thing is is ready, still going to go the distance. And uh, I think uh, I'm actually really, really stoked and happy <laughs> that this little movie had turned into such a big deal. I mean, it... it for something that you know a lot of the bloggers were trying to try so hard to berate it to uh to bring it down almost seem, almost like it seemed like they're trying to do that it actually reversed and 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 actually made it very popular and, and to the point that it's almost maybe just maybe cross your fingers reach a billion dollars and uh, I think there's something to be said about this type of film. Something to be said that a, a direction or a type of movie that DC shouldn't be afraid to make. I think this spells very good uh, for the future of DC content after all. I mean, this is something that uh, Disney won't be able to do totally different than from what disney can do this is what we're talking about this is what zach's been talking about this is what christopher nolan's been talking about. this is all these different people uh, who have come to dc and try to make something different it, don't copy marvel don't be like marvel let's do or, or like todd phillips says do something that marvel can't and this is what they can't do an R-rated film, uh, a cinematic, uh, artistic, uh, a character study type of film for, with a serious tone, a tone and a lot of depth and, and able to ask the questions that a lot of people don't want to ask. You know, go into stories and uh, that a lot of these uh, other entertainment companies like Disney don't want to go into 
They don't want to scratch that controversial itch, if you will. They don't want to get into this dark and nasty uh, type of movie uh, that the, the, they don't want to get their hands that dirty. Um, and this is something that Warner Brothers, they don't have a model saying they cannot make these films. They can make director-driven films. And with that in mind, these directors can make these films and if let alone, this magic could happen, right? Something that costs what fifty-five to another article says like sixty something million dollars, uh, plus you know a hundred million dollars in uh, you know marketing or, or things like that. Uh, and but come out and gross profit such a huge amount because it's such a well-made movie. I want to see Warner Brothers take more risks like this or go back to the days where they did take risks like this and actually let the directors do what they want um and at the same breath i don't want them to all just give them a small budget uh to work with i want them to take risks on bigger films as well bigger films that would need a, a bigger substantial budget in order to tell its story something that they give to christopher nolan in terms of what the big movies he wants to do like interstellar tenet you know it they, they give him that amount because he when left alone he's able to craft his own story and make an incredible story an incredible movie that makes a lot of money and so i want warner brothers to you know kind of get down get dirty take big risks and at the same time when you do put that faith into the director that you hired to make your project and then maybe just maybe you'll get some magic happen just like what happened to the joker here incredible stuff right now a profit over almost half a million dollars in profit Whew. that is crazy crazy business right there so very happy for todd phillips the joker uh, i hope it continues to be very successful now the other movie that was successful was aquaman it grossed over a billion dollars worldwide and it seems like everybody is kind of talking about the sequel while speaking with et online the aquaman star tease that there's a lot more in store on so many more levels there's going to be a lot it's way bigger momo also added that he brought his own ideas to warner brothers for the sequel i'm really stoked at the fan base and what we did with the movie and just went into warner brothers in dc and said you know i have some ideas they love them uh and james wan and everyone's like we're all taking it in we're excited to do another one so he also revealed later on that uh, they loved his ideas and they're locked in to do that sequel uh, and that's the movie that they're going to make of course it's not going to happen until you know, December of uh, 16th of 22nd, uh, 2022 but um, at least we can kind of guess what he's trying to see here it's going to be way bigger how much bigger can you go from going in an underwater adventure all the way to the other end of the earth or, uh, you know, going into uh, uh, the trench and all that, that is huge. I mean, what else can they do that's way bigger? And I think I know. I think what they're going to do is get that on land uh, because uh, you've got 70% water, there's 30% land. I think what they're going to do is kind of what we've seen in Thrones of Atlantis, and I've talked about this already, uh, that King Orm somehow gets out uh, with the help of Black Manta, and they storm the shores of land, right? They go and uh, invade the cities. Now, th that could be problematic, because once you invite Aquaman to the surface, then there is no way you cannot involve the justice league in any way right there is a mass invasion from atlantis to the surface dwellers there's got to be involving the justice league so that is problematic if they are trying to you know contain the story to just aquaman and not involve the justice league members but how do you make it bigger i mean of course you can probably go to more areas of the water but i'm saying that if they really think about um there's going to be a lot 
And what he's saying is going to be way bigger. Of course, you know, Jason Momoa is always a hype man in any case. But when you're thinking about a sequel, do you want to see just more invasions of the same sea creatures? Possibly. That could happen as well. But I want to think that they're going to actually do invading the surface dwellers and then with that in mind bigger could also mean throwing in cameos of the justice league members and and if that's true then we can go back to those behind the scenes that's concept art of what they were thinking about uh aquaman where you actually see superman in the distance you see bat the bat wing in the distance uh i mean that could potentially have they could borrow that concept and actually put it in to the aquaman sequel and therefore making it bigger by including cameos from other heroes making it bigger because it goes into the surface there in, it's an invasion of war between the surface dwellers and atlantis instead of just underwater and that in itself that could be giant and bigger in my mind in any case uh, it, none of that could actually happen it could stay underwater sure but any if i were to think about thinking about how an Aquaman sequel to be uh, bigger and larger, that's what I'm going to be thinking. Involving some more Justice League members, surface dwelling, uh, surface dwelling invasions, and uh, I think that would be pretty damn sick. Uh, and that's going to be a surefire like $1 to $2 billion hit right there. Uh, but yeah. We're not going to be able to see anything until a little bit further. And hopefully when we get into more uh, pre-production uh, about uh, uh, Aquaman 2, maybe we'll have hints of what is to come for that gigantic movie. Now, the last but not least, uh, there is a video that's been circling around. This is from Gamma Ray TV. Uh, and he doesn't have too many followers on uh, Twitter, but he has about 22K in subscribers on YouTube. And But I want to link uh, down below this video. This is an incredible breakdown of the Snyder Cut. It is almost, it's very cool. It's very documentary like uh, with a lot of great editing and uh, effects and things like that. And if it, it's a great breakdown, uh, just a small snippet of the history. It doesn't include everything that we know now in terms like Jay Oliva or what Zack Snyder said and things like that. It's almost like a breakdown of, of someone outside the movement sees into the inside and what they can learn by being on the outside right and how that person who's on the outside can share that info with other people around the, in the community and around the world so i think this is a great thing because if this person who is seemingly i think is on the outside uh because i've never heard of them before um and they were able to make this video, this content, that is extremely well done. Uh, then that is great because that means a lot of this information that we know, at least half of it, is available to the people to the outside. Meaning for most of the fact, this is not really a mythical Snyder Cut. It actually exists. And he goes into detail, maybe it's finished or maybe it's not. But it, it tells you... And makes you understand the dynamics between the studios, filmmakers, and fans, and how each one could affect each other. Uh, and which is really a, something that we already know, but I think it makes people understand why a cut could exist, why this happened, and uh, what what could it mean for the you know future of cinema, the future of movies from here on forth. Um, and, but it also very much details that the Snyder Cut does exist, uh, whether it's finished or not, it doesn't matter, but um, that it does exist, what happened, uh, it even has a, a little bit of a moment of silence for Autumn Snyder's, which I thought was very sweet, uh, and I think everybody and anybody should really check out this video. Of course, understand that if you are already in deep knee deep in the Snyder Cut movement and you know what Jay Oliva said you know what Zack Snyder said then you'll probably see this as kind of like your basic uh tipping your toe you know dipping your toes into this a lake or ocean called the release of Snyder Cut so it's just a little bit tidbit into it but it gets 
people who don't know anything about the Snyder Cut uh, a fundamental, uh, basic understanding of what the release of Snyder Cut is. And I think that in itself is, is the true reward uh, for, for having this video out there. So go and share this video. Uh, click and like, subscribe to this guy. I think he did a very uh, great job, a well done uh, breakdown about the release of Snyder Cut. All right, guys. Well, that is it for tonight. Thank you so much for subscribing. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.